an electrostatics example here where we have two charges. We won't say how they're fixed at these locations, but they're there, not moving, electrostatics. And they're small metal objects separated by eight centimeters. Um, the individual charges are unknown, but we're told they're attracting each other. So, attracting each other, and the force 3.7 times 10 to the minus 6 newtons. Well, it's pretty obvious. This is an example of uh, Coulomb's force law. So the general law of force KQ1, Q2 over R squared. R is the distance from center to center of the two objects. We won't worry about the physical sizes of these objects. Just say they're very, very small uh, conducting objects. So I've placed uh, the numbers over here. Is there anything wrong with this uh, formula, this equation? Formula, equation. Anything wrong with this equation? There is. What's wrong with this equation? I've got the constant, standard metric units, 9 times 10 to the 9th, that's good. Uh, 8 centimeters is now in meters, 0 0.08 meters. We have to square that, so that's fine. So we might focus our attention over here. Well, the concept here, these objects are attracting. What's true about the signs of the two charges, Q1 and Q2, if they're going to attract each other? They have to be opposite charges. So one is a positive, one is a negative. I must put a minus sign in front of uh, the force number. Q1 and Q2 are uh, oppositely signed. When we multiply a positive and a negative, we get a negative. If you don't do that, your math work is going to be uh, misleading, to say the least. All right, so now we have two unknowns, one equation. Obviously needs some more information. So the extra information is that someone with an insulated hand that doesn't remove any charge uh, from Q2 uh, picks up this object, makes it touch uh, object 1. The two objects share charge, they're conductors, so the, the charge can move freely. And now we replace the uh, second object at 8 centimeters, and there's a different force. And now they're repelling, no longer attracting, but now they're repelling with a force of 1.2 times 10 to the minus 6 newtons. So when they touch, they're going to share charge, and they're going to share charge equally if they're the same size, same small size. So we'll put Q3 on the two objects, still 8 centimeters apart, even though my drawing might be a little compressed. Um, now our force is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 6 newtons, still 9 times 10 to the ninth for a constant. Q3 times Q3, I'm just going to simplify that. We have Q3 times Q3, it's Q3 squared, and divide by 0 0.08 squared. Is there anything wrong with this equation? I've got the constant, correct. I've got meters here, Q3 times Q3, that's Q3 squared. I'm now showing a plus in front of the force. Is that correct? They're repelling. To repel, the charges must be the same sign. And Pretty obviously here I've squared here. Anytime we square, we're going to get a positive. So yes, it's positive here. Very important it is negative back here. Um, when they um, when they touch, I've got Q3 here, Q3 here. So 2 times Q3, that would be the total charge in this situation. That's deriving from Q1 plus Q2. These two charges uh, share. They add up and uh, we get this formula. And now I have three unknowns, Q1, Q2, Q3, and I have three equations. The equation here, this Coulomb's law, and this Coulomb's law. So we'll start solving this, and my first step is I'm going to solve for Q3 from this uh, equation. So I take the force number times 0.08 squared, divide by 9 times 10 to the ninth, and then take a square root. You should repeat this on your own. But I came up with a value of 9.3, sorry, 9.238 times 10 to the minus 10 coulombs. 9.238 times 10 to the minus 10 coulombs. Uh, that's the number for Q3. I'm going to now substitute that in here and uh, 
doing so two times this, I get 1.848 times 10 to the minus 9 equals Q1 plus Q2. My method now is that I'm going to do some substitutions. Um, I'm going to substitute for Q1. Uh, I've already used this equation, so I'm going to solve for Q1 here and then substitute that in to the uh, expression up here. Or sorry, substitute. Yeah, let's just go for it. Now substitute it in to the. Um, well, let's go ahead and solve for for Q1. So Q1 is 1.848 times 10 to the minus 9 minus Q2. Now I have the Q1 number ready, and. I'm going to use that in the uh, um, expression that I derive from this equation for Q1 times Q2. So if we solve for the quantity Q1 times Q2, I should have done that earlier, but uh, I'll do it now, need it now. So solving this for the quantity Q1 times Q2, we take our force, it's a negative, times 0 0.08 squared divided by 9 times 10 to the 9th. And what we come up with for Q1 times Q2, uh, see if this is correct. 2.631 times 10 to the minus 18. I'm checking to see if you're actually following the steps here. So I'm using this. I'm solving for Q1 times Q2. What you should observe is this is a minus we had a minus here that has to be preserved. So Q1 times Q is a negative quantity as it should be. We have two objects that are attracting. So the sign of the charge, one of these is positive, one of these is negative. Um, so now we'll take this and uh, substitute here for Q1. And I'll have 1.848 times 10 to the minus 9 minus Q2 times Q2 is equal to minus 2.631 times 10 to the minus 18. So replacing the symbol Q1 with its equivalent, this expression, 1.848 times 10 to the minus 9 uh, minus Q2. And now I'm going to distribute Q2 through here. So I'll have 1.848 times 10 to the minus 9 Q2 minus Q2 squared equals minus 2.631 times 10 to the minus 8. This is a quadratic equation. We have uh, the variable, the unknown, Q2 squared. And I'm going to rewrite this in standard form for quadratic equations. I prefer a um, positive in front of the squared variable. So I'm going to add Q2 squared to both sides. I'm going to subtract 1.848 times 10 minus 9 Q2 from both sides. And we'll uh, achieve this expression, this quadratic formula. It is very important to keep track of the plus and minus signs on these numbers. And also, any... Uh, full numbers. I just noticed that I dropped this 10 to the minus 18. That's 10 to the minus 18, 10 to the minus 18, 10 to the minus 18 here. Um, <coughs> so there's our quadratic equation. I'm going to use quadratic formula to solve this. So that's Q2 equals minus the B coefficient. The B coefficient includes the sign. Well, I've dropped a lot of things. There's Q2 here. Um, but the coefficient in front of the linear variable, Q2, is to the first power. It's been kind of squeezed in here. My apologies. But um, 1.848, 10 to the minus 9, Q2. Negative sign because it was moved to the right side. And that's has to have a minus sign fronted in the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is the our answer we're trying to achieve is minus b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac 
underneath a radical. So the b squared is minus, or sorry, the b is minus 1.848 times 10 to the minus 9. We square that. Then minus 4 times the a coefficient is 1. And the c value, I've almost obliterated its sign, but the c is minus 2.631 times 10 to the minus 18. Well, that's under the radical. And then we divide by 2a. And a has a value of 1. So we have to work this out for uh, our solution. The quantity under the radical, also known as the discriminant, so I've worked this out, and I came up with 1.394 times 10 to the minus 17. Um, we'll be taking the square root of this as we proceed here. So the Q2 is 1.848 times 10 to the minus 9. I have a minus distributed on a minus, so that creates a positive. And then plus or minus the square root of this number is 3.734 times 10 to the minus 9. This has to be divided by 2. If I use the plus sign here and do this calculation, this number plus this number, get that answer and divide by 2 on your calculator, and you'll come up with, and you should check this on your own, 2.791 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs. And now I'm going to use this value of Q2, 2.791 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs. And I'm coming back to my substitution equation. Uh, I can calculate Q1 by taking this number minus the value of Q2. I have the value of Q2. So the Q1 value is minus 9.43 times 10 to the minus 10. Coulombs. Is it a surprise that I have a positive here and a negative here? Not a surprise, because we know we need opposite signs. If I use the minus sign in the uh, calculation here for Q2, I get Q2 of minus 9.43 times 10 to the minus 10 coulombs. That should not be a surprise. Look, it's right here but now on Q2. And if I take this number for Q2, this is these are not signs in front here, but indicating I came up with this number for Q2, came up with Q2 by using the minus sign in this calculation. This number minus this number, then divide by 2. This number is larger in magnitude than this number, so we end up with a negative result for Q2. And if I take this value for Q2, and I want to calculate Q1, so I replace Q2 up here with minus 9.43 times 10 to the uh, minus 10. I'll have a minus and a minus for the Q2 number itself. And Q1 ends up being positive. Any guesses as to what it will be? Work it out yourself. 2.791 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs. So there's our uh, pair, Q1 and Q2. And you should double check. You put in the Q1 and Q2, doesn't matter which pair you use. Uh, but say we use this. So if I take 2.791 times 10 to the minus 9 and minus 9.43 times 10 to the minus 10, and I substitute them in here, I should come up with minus 3.7 times 10 to the minus 6 when I do the whole calculation. Uh, so I've done that, it worked. Hopefully it will work when you check that. You should check your work. And if you have questions, ask your instructor.